Today is National Brandied Fruit Day. What is a brandied fruit? Take a guess. I'm going to say it's a fruit that they soaked in brandy. You're right. Blah. That sounds awful. Why? Do you not like brandy? I don't like fruit. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cardia. I am Lucretia Mott. Lucretia Mott and this here is Frank looking as snazzy as ever. God, I love Frank. Yeah, I do too. Um, what's up guys? It is Wednesday, first day of our week and we are happy to be here and oh my, I was out this morning. It's cold. I woke up on, I woke up. <laughs> I woke up early today. I said, you know what, Spencer? Sometimes something about the cold, I need to start my days early. And I went out to my car to go to the gym, and it was freezing. Freezing, freezing. No. I, are you saying no, it wasn't 32 degrees out? Yes. Well, it was cold. It felt cold. And I was sitting in the car, and I'm like, I should have preheated my car. And this is not a feeling that I missed. I think since I, August, I've been calling this out. I said, for for there's a reason, but I think that it might get cold soon. <laughs> and it in fact got cold soon but not soon enough what uh n it's it's we're, we're delayed in our cold weather um as regards to the climate following a pattern that it has followed for all the years i would like it to follow a pattern of 70 degrees 70 degree days all year round that's very um bad no, it was very bad for the environment yeah so I you know. say that if you want a climate of then you gotta move. you should move you, you should move yeah but if you can't be up north and say that no what about the polar bars <laughs> yeah i do love the polar bars um i'd be a good uh i'd be a good uh candy like a chocolate bar mm -hmm. and like it would you know the the like uh fruit loops has um two can sam mm -hmm. this would be a candy bar with polar bears well you know what i'm thinking of the klondike bar the Klondike bar. Oh, that is a bar with polar bears on it. And it's frozen. So how... So what would you do for a Klondike no, bar? No, <laughs> so they, they really missed the mark on not calling, not calling that a polar, polar bar. bar. Yeah, you're right. That would be perfect. Like, they have everything except for the Maybe name Maybe it right. exists and we don't know. Like, it's what somewhere in Canada or the Midwest. For, for a, a polar, polar bar. bar. Yeah, that is better. Yeah. And it's ice cream. You're right. That, like, of course, that, that's what it would be. It's not white ice cream. Hmm. You like you like you like Klondike bars? I don't like chocolate. I said every podcast, and I'll say it again. You could just crack it off. But then why don't I just have ice cream? Because you can hold it in your hand. Oh yeah, they should. No, it's fine. <laughs> I don't need to hold it in my hand. Today is National Brandied Fruit Day. What is a brandied fruit? Take a guess. I'm gonna say it's a fruit that they soaked in brandy. You're right. Blah. That sounds awful. Why? Do you not like brandy? I don't like fruit. <laughs> <laughs> don't put fruit in my brandy. <laughs> yeah. Um, in the, I think, like Victorian type age. Yeah. To preserve. It preserves it. You would put your fruit. So take. Is it soggy? I think it becomes like a, gel, uh, like a um, jam. Oh, okay. Sugar, the fruit, and something else. You leave it at the very least. Uh, brandy. Look at me. Something else. Brandy. Yeah. You leave it at the very least 30 days okay and i'm guessing not in the fridge because this mm. was before and so then you have a jam that you can put in a jar have, yeah it's a brandied jam right or brandied brandied candy jam brandied fruits. brandied fruit day um it's probably a lot of people don't know it like you didn't know it and maybe people want to investigate it because i think i think you know we talk about holidays here a lot and a lot of them we give a pass like hey why can't there be a a, a sunflower day but mm -hmm. That seems like a stretch. Why? To give what if people forget about it? Good. I think that's one of those things that like is meant to be forgotten. <clears throat> like ancient grains. Anytime I see that, like made with ancient grains, I'm like, doesn't that's not you're not selling me. I want modern grains. <laughs> no, you don't. Modern grains are bad. It's also International Chef's Day. Now see this is something I get behind. I used to be a chef. Mm hmm Not really. I think chef is one of those titles that you can't just claim unless you're like you earned it. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, chef. No chef. I think you can be a cook. Oh. Uh, but I think well, a chef I'd is the head of the kitchen. I'd say they could be chefs. Who cares? Who's your favorite chef? That one from the Muppets. Who's that? I don't know. Oh, he has, like, a he has the mustache? Yeah. The Italian? Mine's uh, Boyardee. Oh, I 
I, I miss it. I'm gluten free uh, and yeah. vegetarian. <laughs> but love some. What was your favorite? Um, the full size ravioli. Full. I was gonna say the opposite. <laughs> the mini raviolis. Mini? Just that sauce. I know. It has a tang to it. I just saw a meme. And I don't know if it's ever called a meme. It's like the graphic, the little. Yeah, why yeah. not? We'll call it whatever. Um, and it said, like, <laughs> the peak of depression eating um, out of the ca- can cold over the sink. <laughs> I, hey. Hey, guys. I'm going to tell you a little secret. I love things cold out of the can. I, it's. Oh, I would. Hobo. I, are you allowed to say hobo anymore? I don't know. Do you have a stick? Vagrant. A kerchief. Now, vagrant sounds like Worse. you're committing a crime. Like tramp is what was what they said back tramp, in the day. You're a railroad tramp. Yeah. Um. <laughs> but anyhow, I I would make it. I would like my people think like oh apocalypse like with some what some bad things. I think of like what the benefits are. I was watching one movie about an apocalypse, and they were handing out like the rations, and they would just hand out like a can of something because that's it lasts so long, and they were just eating out of it. And I'm like, I wish I was bold enough to. Sometimes I'll take a bite of a few a bite or two out of a cold can. I might lose some followers over this, but it just it hits different. It does something about it. Well, we I talked before about how strange that something becomes palatable by heating. So you know, like yeah, that. and that's the thing. You Same know what? Thing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like. I, do I am I sitting here saying I it's like fully cooked? That's what. I, I, yeah. Am I sitting here saying I, I like raw things? No. But do I like fully cooked beef stew that is not reheated? Yeah, you know what? I do, and I'm not going to back down. I'm not. It is Jelly Roll Morton's birthday. Jelly Roll Morton? Yeah. What did he do? He invented jazz. Oh, wow. He was The um, father of jazz? He was born in 1890, and he died in 1941. And the reason we don't know his true age is because you didn't even need a birth certificate until 1914. Really? Yeah. I miss those days. You go to the DMV. I'm sorry. I was born before 1914. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was born <laughs> 1913. Um, he said he invented jazz. I guess if you were a jazz expert, um, a jazzosaurus. A ja- ja- jazz expert. A jazz expert. Um, you might say, well, what about blah, blah, blah. But ja- or, I don't, that seems pretty early you know, for jazz. So I think he could be the father of jazz. Maybe. I don't know. But I also think if you listen to his music, it isn't going to be what you think of as jazz. Oh, like I, I think you know, the jazz we all know from what, what year was like the like the blues and I don't like know. and the, like they're down down the like, little thing. underground uh, cafe, just doing their saxophone, yeah, letting it rip. I don't know. Um, I I, I just looked at him briefly. Jelly Roll Morton, obviously that's his nickname. Um. But it, I think it's when it started to be like you, you, you have sheet music, but then like you improvise. Yeah. You know. Oh, ooh. jazz. They say it's from the soul. Mm. Mm-hmm. The blues. Nothing likes some jazz. I like jazz. I like smooth jazz. Yeah. Smooth jazz. I've I mean, always wanted to be a smooth jazz radio host. You can. No, nah, nah, I can't. You probably need a. a, a Don't you know all the history? No, nah, I was gonna say like a radio degree on how to do all that to get one of those jobs but i would love it welcome back to 96.5 smooth jazz you could just have a youtube channel and do it i'm your boy spencer no one you won't say your boy i am your man i don't spencer. think spencer cardia cartier sounds very jazzy i am your man jelly roll spencer right <laughs> coming at you live we're gonna roll right into one of my personal favorites jelly roll jazz okay Check out Jelly Roll Morton's music. Check it out. Uh, I don't. I don't know if the sound quality will be good at this point. Maybe it's been digitally remastered. Well, yeah. I mean, you can re- replicate music. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why no, not? I mean, what what he actually played or something. Oh, like what his hands actually touched. Yeah. Yeah. Try well, that. I will. I will try that. <laughs> what else you got for me on this beautiful wet and cold Wednesday? It's you one- know what? It was beautiful though. Let me not just let cold talk about how my day went because i went for a walk today Mm -hmm. and let me tell you i've never seen such a blue sky not a cloud in sight and i looked up and i'm like you know what hey it's a little bit chilly Mm -hmm. do i have clothes on my back to keep me warm sure do i got the holy spirit burning inside of me heck yeah 
And so what, who am I to let just a 10 degree change in temperature dampen my day? How about that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um... Last time we did, I think last time we did the podcast, I said I'll do a story time about me falling when I was walking. Yeah, you fell in the cemetery. In the cemetery. Sp- in spooky season. I won't go into When the it. veil is thin between yeah, this world and the next. <laughs> no, you're right, though. Yeah, I'm just saying. Um, I won't go into a long story about it, but um, you walk all the time. You got me into walking. Okay, so first of all. I got you into walking because I knew you first. Because you taught me how to walk. That yeah, count. and I used to, I used to walk all that the kids does, all over town, oh, much not, more than other get people. Out of here! Made you have an affinity every, for it. Every everybody and your muscles are made for it. Everybody, wa- no, I, everyone actually, doesn't walk. I I was made to walk, but I think that's genetic. I don't know if it, like, well, I, I activated it. Nature versus nurture. <laughs> walking ability. Activated. I, I've always said like, I'm the best speed walker around. Right. And for a while there, I was running, but. Even though I wasn't hurting myself, <clears throat> I felt little tinges on my knees and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I've decided that my body's not like for me to, to I will never be an elite runner. Right. Even if I spent my 20 years running. Mm-hmm. Some people, I think like Usain Bolt, you know how Michael Phelps, he has these like attributes that a normal human. St- mm-hmm. I just get so teared up. <laughs> Michael. <laughs> Eight gold medals <laughs> in one year. <laughs> he has these attributes like like. An abnormally long torso. Everything works. Oh, uh, yeah. Everything was like he's genetically designed to right. be a swimmer. Right. And then he put all the work in. Usain Bolt, his height, his stride, his um, muscle structure, I don't know, was made to run. Mm-hmm. And obviously he put in more work than so many other people. Right. But if Michael Phelps and, and, and Usain Bolt put the same amount of work into running, I think Usain Bolt would still win. If they both put the same amount of time into, into swimming, I think Michael Phelps would have still win. That being said, I don't think I'm made for running. But walking, even on untrained speed walking Spencer. That should be like my Instagram handle. <laughs> speed walking Spencer. I like the untrained part. Untrained speed walking Spencer. Um, was super fast. And yeah. so like then I'm at the point where I'm genetically gifted like Michael Phelps. Right. And it's like that's where I so that's where I switch. I'm gonna start putting my time into what I'm really good at. Right. Walking. I'm built for it. But but your genetics come from me. <sighs> I think it's from my paternal side. It's but. not. Because he doesn't want to walk from the car to to the store. So it came from come from me, but I hadn't walked in a while. Well, last year was was um the shutdown and you weren't allowed to walk. I did walk in circles in my yard. <laughs> You're not allowed to walk. <laughs> allowed there shall to... be no walking. There wasn't. The parks were closed. Well, yeah, but that I mean, like, you can still walk. <laughs> no, you weren't allowed. Everyone had to sit down. Sit I, down. I, and um, but you got me back into walking. Last year, the student becomes a teacher. Back into, so not for the first time. But anyway, so I started doing it again. It was great. All my numbers were doing great. My lab results and so forth. And I made a just terribly fatal. Not fatal. <laughs> critical mistake. Oh my God. <laughs> a critical mistake. Last week, um, I vowed to never go into a cemetery again. What did um, you make that vow for? That's a different story. <laughs> I went. I walked. A spirit pushed me forward. Mm. Some people say I just... What's the real story? Well, the ground was super rocky. Okay. And um, Tripped? Yeah. Tripped sideways and um, fell... And why did I say that last week? Oh, my hand, which is which is um, healing my stigmata. Yeah. Um, yeah. So anyway, hurt my hurt my leg, but not in a doctor's way. Just in a way like anno- annoyance. Well, you're all bruised up. Yeah, but I bruise easy. All right. So anyway, um, I think we should just start. Let's start. Let's begin. Hello and welcome back to the Crook and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cartier. I. Oh no. Oh, that wasn't just all just a pre-show thing. We're filming right now. Oh. I'm Lucretia Mott. Do you know who Lucretia Mott is? No. Well, if you know Lamott right here, um, Elkins Park. Yeah, sure. That's what it's named for. And she was, um, she was one of those anti-slavery uh, women in at the time who did a lot of good. I don't know. Look her up. There's a lot of historical markers over there. Historical markers. We'd love to see it. But guys, it is One Word Wednesday. If you don't already know One Word Wednesday, we pick a word, any word, and we find some spiritual significance in it. Because we live in a spiritual world. This is a Christian podcast. Welcome if this is your first time. And um, I just remembered one more thing. What's this? 
prayer request, not prayer request because no one's requested it, but I'm requesting it. The people pray for our our YouTube friend, Kicking It With My Divas. Kicking It With My Divas. She is in the hospital and um, she could just use positive energy hey, heading hey, her way. Hey, we're, we're, the, we believe in the power of prayer over here. Yeah. So you all just pray for praying with, or sorry. Kicking It With My Divas. Kicking It With My Divas. You know, today we're praying with my divas. How about that? Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, so prayers from us, from the three of us, and hopefully from some of you guys. Anyhow, one more Wednesday, everything has spiritual significance, we believe. And so we try to find that, you know? You can look around anywhere and you can you can say, man, this is really bringing me closer to God. Yeah. And so that, Or you can look at it with fresh eyes. like Fresh eyes. You know, if it's not bringing you closer to God, it, it, it is just... You're seeing a spiritual significance in something that you haven't considered before. Mm. I feel like maybe I'm giving away what the word is. You might be. <laughs> the word is mukbang. <laughs> I listened to the pronunciation on the on the on the computer a few times so I could say it right. Mukbang. Mukbang. But what do you think it was? Like mukbang. Muk mukbang. Mukbang. I think. Yeah, but I'm so. Torn. I'm American, so it's. Mukbang. That's what I was about to say. I'm, I'm always torn with those things. Like I kind of get mad sometimes when Italians say mozzarella right because i'm like i'm not italian you're, yeah it's like uh why are you not going through every but then i guess you, you, know, you can also pay homage to something like we're not calling them tortillas are we yeah we learn so, um, i'm back and forth on it always but let's just call it mukbang for the sake of the argument let's explain what it is before people can start getting freaked out about what we're talking about um you might still be after we're done talking about <laughs> it so mukbang started They've sort of they've sort of transitioned. Yeah. I, I feel like originally what it was is it's from it started out in Korea. Korea. Started out. In I'll Korea. give you check marks for the things that it you started know. <laughs> out in Korea, where on camera you would eat an mm -hmm. egregious amount of food, and um, that's it really. It was just as much as you can eat. It sort of got has gotten. First of all, it's come to every country, and it's also I feel like gotten diluted to sheer amount of food. To also just eating food, like I've I've, yeah. I've seen it now with just like, and honestly, I, I've never cared about seeing someone eat, yeah, a hundred pounds of food, right? But when someone's trying a new In and Out burger, I've I've I'll be honest, I've I've watched someone eat a, a, a new In and Out burger because there's no In and Outs on Pennsylvania, right? And I'm often curious, right, about oh, what does it look like? What are the reviews? And instead yeah. of reading. Well, the patty was cooked perfectly. Seeing someone eat something real time, it's yeah. like you can kind of get a better idea. Correct. So, yeah. Correct. A mukbang is um, literally Korean for eating show. Mm -hmm. It's from 2010. Okay. And um, it's become a global trend. Yeah. Ugh, we should have a mukbang. I'm only saying that because I'm starving. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it actually, st supposedly, actually started because in Korea, they had such a food culture on such healthy eating practices and strict etiquette that it was it was oh so it was taboo it was taboo it was taboo when, when everything's organized and you have your white rice yeah and your broccoli yeah. and your meat right this is like let's just have a huge bowl of lao mein and eat it with a fork right are you for or against the mukbang i'm for it I'm, I'm should christians be for it Ah, we have a, a lot of friends on YouTube that are mukbangers. So that's a tough one because um, you get into you get into this gluttony. Yeah. Is this, yeah. yeah. So this is this is all just talking about gluttony. Um, they shall say the Deuteronomy. They shall say to the elders, "This son of ours is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey us. He is a glutton and a drunkard." And let me just read a couple more. And put a knife to your throat if you are given to gluttony. Proverbs. Proverbs for drunkards and gluttons become poor. And drowsiness clothes, clothes them in rags. Um, gluttons disgrace his father. Here is a glutton and a drunkard. Um, here is a glutton and a drunkard. So they combine those two a lot. Well, um, that must mean it was Jesus talking? Because that's the two. Um, that's Isn't that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and Paul? Matthew, well, actually, I mean, oh, yeah, that's why Luke it's, it's the same. But it's. You know how the, the Gospels repeat? Yeah. When so Jesus the Son of Man it. came eating and drinking, and they say. Here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by her deeds. Oh, so they were talking about Jesus, probably. Son of man. 
We don't know. We don't have the whole thing. Yeah, so, so uh, we can't say that you yeah. know, uh, anything about it unless we're... Maybe walk through Thursday. Well, it was an insult. Yeah. You know, it was an insult. Um, it's always an insult. It's never... It's never one of a good Cre- thing. One of Crete's own prophets has said it. Cretans are always liars, evil brutes, lazy gluttons. So let's talk about what gluttony is. Yeah, we have to because that's um, a word that people don't know. Gluttony is, is overindulging. Yes. And um, is it specifically in food? It's 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 well known to be for food. Oh, here it is. Um, overconsumption of food, drink, but it actually could just be wealth items. Yeah. Anything that's kind of so as a status symbol. Uh, yeah. So you know, like. Uh, I'm trying to think. I don't, I don't know. I can't think right now. But the idea is we are, as Christians, always say we don't want to um, become too dependent on earthly things. Right. With materials. Right. You see it when it keeps comparing it with drunkards is because it's like you're you're going for these earthly satisfactions. Right. And the same thing with food. If like, like uh, when you stop seeing food as energy and, and something to keep you going. Right that um and instead as that is your pleasure like right. it, it's all these it, it's 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 this this pleasure thing we talk about it um with the senses right when you get overindulged in the five senses which are earthly um it can take you away from your spiritual sense and if some would say your sixth sense and, and so to give too much power to any of those things is pulling you away from god but we also have always said with senses is that we shouldn't deny ourselves the pleasures in life because if anything we, i mean look at walk through thursday we always not walk through thursday look at one word wednesday the whole point is to find spirituality in earthly pleasures earthly things right and so when you taste you know great food and stuff it doesn't have you don't have to be guilty and say oh, the only thing good i should get is god because god gave us food and, and we should right. be able to enjoy it but it all comes in moderation which brings up mukbangs which is not moderation. And part of... So, the seven deadly sins are not in the Bible. They're not. I think it's from what? Um, I don't know. But Christians um, believe in it, and they, they these are sins that you don't want to yeah. do, and one of them is gluttony. Yeah. And part of the reason we... The other part of the reason that gl- people don't like gluttony is because you feel that you are being so greedy, meaning... Um, and the, I hear this a lot about America, where you see these, um, oh, we made... I don't know, a house out of Rice Krispie Treats, and it's like there's starving people in the world. Yeah. Like, so if you you ate beyond satisfying your hunger, yeah. and you're now wasting food, be- and there's it's distasteful because there's people that are hungry. So that's part of the reason people don't like gluttony. Yeah, it is. Um, but. But we're back to mukbangs. Back to mukbangs. So mukbangs, um, you said you're for it. Well, now I don't know. I know, that's the problem. I am for it. I don't know. I don't know either. I'm not against the people who are doing it. Well, no. So, so here's okay. Here, here's my thoughts for off the bat. Okay. Off the bat, you know, maybe I, maybe this would have been a good one. To, you know, give me a little heads up. Okay. So I can think about it. In a I'm sorry. Manner. I'm sorry. But off the bat, what is a mukbang? We know the definition. Yeah. It is not excessive eating. It's excessive eating on camera. Yes. So already you're starting at a place of entertainment for others. Yes. You are. You aren't in your room by yourself um eating all this food which yeah i i could see could be more as once again i'm not condemning anyone for it but could living in a habit of of um having food on such a pedestal of like more right. better porn. yeah um it can be a, uh, an earthly distraction just like so many other things can and it could be dealt with in moderation now the question comes in if you're doing it for the purpose of entertainment does it change? And I think, yeah, a little bit. You, like, your brain, you know, like, like, it, it, it's, it's an interesting topic to bring up. But like I said, why I watch it? I mean, I watch it uh, sometimes to see foods that I haven't had, right? Or to see, you know. Well, um, a lot of people have been studying. It, even though it's very little studied, even though it's been around mm-hmm. for quite some time, it's been little studied. But now that people are studying it scientifically, yeah. and they're wanting to know why do people like this and and why do they want to see it, some of the reasons were what you said. You know, oh, it's like things that I would have never had. Yeah. Um. There are people who are very isolated and alone, mm. and you're eating with someone else. Yeah, I've seen that. But the thing that they were 
telling people and then that's what i'm saying um sometimes our one word wednesday isn't we found a spiritual meaning in it but maybe be aware always be aware yes that's what i was gonna say right um because there can be an addiction that happens from first of all just wanting to watch it but yeah. second of all you have to have a reality so like you just said they're not eating like that all the time but who knows what person is going to think that I see that person eat that way at dinner. They must eat that way all day long. Mm -hmm. Well, they couldn't. Yeah. You know, for health and for money. Yeah. So you think, well, everybody knows. That. Everyone doesn't know that. And that's why a lot of stuff on the internet is misleading to people. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, my, 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 my overall thing, what I got from it is just what you said, being, being aware. Um, right. Know that something like, like something like this is, an earthly enjoyment right and it should be enjoyed you know like we're, we're you nothing's wrong with being blessed with the ability to have food right um it's great <clears throat> to entertain people love that it's great to open people up to, to new things right but with anything with with the like, things that are smaller than this like watching movies like it's um is there earthly pleasures that we should enjoy god right. god give granted us the ability to enjoy these things but to not become um, obsessed with right something on earth that is temporary right like look like like how temporary is food you know it's like quite literally a perishable thing so yeah you, uh, I don't think anyone I mean I'm not gonna say anyone but I don't think anyone is putting too much um you know value on something like food but you know you know you never know you never know when when you, when you make that turn of the only enjoyable thing in your day is food. Right. So, <clears throat> you know, like, uh, I, I, I keep saying, you know, oh, remember you said that problem? Yeah. Um, I, on my banking app, um, I have a pie chart that tracks your spending and you, uh, for mine, I talk about, talk about all this. I mean, I, I think mine is, is sort of like food, all this, and then the rest. And it's funny that we're talking about food because I always get mad at myself and I'm like, I don't mind spending money. I'm never hard on myself for spending money. If I'm getting something out of it, it's always tough when it's over. It's the majority over, of your budget. Let's let, let's say cheat like cheat foods for me. This is mm -hmm. how I live my like this is mm -hmm. like how I want. And I'm like, the food's gone, yada yada. If I spend money on even like clothes, they don't right. last forever. But I'm I'm wearing this hoodie, this hoodie that costs the same amount as. That Indian food I had on, on Sunday. Right. And I get to wear it all the time. And so I'd, be, I'd rather be more responsible with my food spending. That's all I'm saying. I think it's important to have a mental pie chart that balances out your, like your entertainment, your spirituality, and your all these things. Right. And then when it comes to these earthly pleasures, whatever you like, it is good to enjoy earthly things. Just be mindful of it. Like, yeah. like, like, I, like, keep making your mukbangs. I will be subscribed. Yeah. Be keep... mindful. I'm sorry. Did I interrupt you? No. Be so... mindful of viewing it, but also be mindful of making it. Just because you're a well-rounded, stable, you know, average person, not everyone out there is. So just, 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 there is just also an awareness that there are viewers who fetishize, fetish, fetish, fetishize. Sure. Make a fetish of it. Yeah. Um. And, you know, when you think about it, you know, the on certain mukbangs, you know, the table is like here. Yeah. It's only the head. It's a lot of the science has been does calls it like true pornography, not mm -hmm. just you know, people say, oh, food porn or, you know, whatever um, that. So like be aware. Everything that you create goes out into the universe. Be aware that it'll be viewed not just from your angle. Yeah, I don't know. It sounds like you're kink shaming right now. I'm not kink shaming. Which is a podcast for a different time. No, I'm ki I'm not kink shaming. I'm saying to kink shame would say don't do it. Mm. I'm saying don't be so naive that not everyone's going to have the same reason because it's 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 it is a niche piece of entertainment. Yeah. Not everyone's going to. You you said you want to watch it because you like to experience new foods. Not everyone watching your mukbang is going to have the same motivation. I'm not saying not to do it. I'm saying be aware of what you're watching and be aware of what who's watching what you're doing yeah i could see that but anyway i think just to summarize which we've said in a lot of these podcasts that are based around earthly pleasures is there's nothing wrong with it 
you know, you like you're it, it, as long as it's not pulling you away from your spiritual journey, right? Then that's the important part. Don't don't neglect yourself of things because when you neglect yourself of things, that's when you end up, you right. know, overindulging. Overindulge. Right. Like, I feel like most gluttony comes from overindulge. Like there's there's a happy medium of and the happy medium. Like I love this pie chart analogy in my head where you have your spiritual life, you know, your working life, your entertainment life, and you always want the balance right. And the more you can keep a mental catalog of what's what of, okay, I, I, I do enjoy this, but it is earthly. Like mm-hmm. I do enjoy Burger King, but I know it's bad for me. And so you are able to always see balance. Oh, I need to spend more time doing this. I need yeah, to spend more time doing to, to one side. And that's the name of the game, guys. Remember, you used to say balance every so often? Balance, balance, <laughs> balance. Here's the yin yang. Uh, but let us know if you want us to have a mukbang. What I'm thinking is uh, cheese steaks. Because I was thinking, what, what? I I have I have a um, aversion yeah. to microphoned chewing sounds. And maybe I'll do it by myself. Mm, maybe I mm. won't watch it. <laughs> maybe, maybe I actually won't film it. What? <laughs> maybe I'll just eat a cheesesteak. All right, guys. We'll be back tomorrow for a walk through Thursday. We're going to do it right this time. We're not going to get distracted. Peace, love, and prosperity. Peace.